Hi there and welcome to TRT World. It's Friday the 15th of May. I'm Patrick Falk in Istanbul. The leaders of Turkish and Greek Cyprus are holding talks today, which could lead to reunification. Turkish Cyprus's newly elected President Mustafa Kinci met President Nikos Anastasiades in Nicosia to set the agenda for the days ahead. Cyprus has been divided between the Greek Cypriot South and Turkish Cypriot North since 1974, when Turkey sent troops after a Greek-inspired coup to unite the islands with Greece. After the war, the island was effectively partitioned into North North and South, and the capital, Nicosia, is still split by a ceasefire and monitored by around a thousand peacekeepers. There have been talks aimed at resolving the Cyprus question before negotiations in 2002, 2004, and 2008 ended without an agreement. Jerome Evans looks at why this time things could be different. Cyprus. In Greek mythology, it's the birthplace of Aphrodite, the goddess of love. But this small island's recent history has been defined by acrimony. Cyprus, an island in the sun, a climate that inspires relaxation. But the political climate breeds riot and race hatred. It's a history of mistrust and violence between Turkish and Greek Cypriots. In the 1950s and 60s, violent clashes were commonplace between the majority Greek and minority Turkish population. Around 25,000 Turkish Cypriots were displaced and hundreds were killed on both sides. In July 1974, Greek nationalists carried out a coup d'etat in Cyprus. Their goal was to unite the island with Greece. President Makarios III fled to London. They thought that uh, I was killed. And uh, indeed, they said uh, over radio that uh, I was dead. As you see, I am alive. Five days later, Turkey sent troops to Cyprus. Hundreds of paratroopers were dropped and thousands of troops landed by sea. Turkish troops quickly took control of the northern third of the island. A ceasefire agreement allowed people displaced in the conflict to transfer to the side of the island their community controlled. The war had lasted only a few days, but the battle lines drawn in that conflict have persisted ever since. But 40 years after the coup and after a number of failed attempts at reunification, there's a new atmosphere in Nicosia. The Turkish Cypriots have a new president, Mustafa Akinci. He's meeting Greek Cypriot President Nikos Anastasiades for what's billed as an exchange of views before negotiations start in earnest. The United Nations will play matchmaker. The leaders expressed their strong commitment, joint commitment, uh, to move forward uh, in a constructive and dedicated manner. But finding a shared solution won't be easy. Although both sides agree in principle on a two-state solution, negotiations will focus on how the government will be made up and how much power it will have. The talks will also have to resolve the issue of thousands of internally displaced people and what compensation they'll be entitled to. And after natural gas and oil reserves were discovered in Cyprus's waters, both sides will want to ensure they get a healthy slice of the profits. Despite the challenges, both leaders are in an upbeat mood as they begin the talks. It remains to be seen whether goodwill can translate into real results and whether the two sides of this small island can reunite at last. Jerome Evans, TRT World. Dr. Sylvia Tiriaki is Deputy Director of the Global Political Trend Center in Istanbul, and she joins me now live in the studio for more on that story. Thanks for being uh, here. And let me begin by asking you, uh, hopes are high. Thank you for uh, having me here. <laughs> uh, hope, hopes are high this time round. How do you think uh, President Akinci is going to make a difference in these talks? Well, uh, the victory of Mustafa Akinci is definitely a good news, and it should be taken that way. But at least... Uh, I mean, me personally, I would opt uh, for more cautious optimism for a couple of reasons. In the modern history or postmodern history of Cyprus problem, which I would date uh, from the uh, failure in the referendum on 24th of April 2004, since that time we have witnessed 
series of uh, different uh, uh, different combinations of uh, of leaders on Turkish Cypriot side on the, and on the Greek Cypriot side. Um, before 2004, I mean, it was always about the late uh, President Rauf Denktas, who was clearly and openly intransigent, and many people who didn't want to see the solution of Cyprus problem were hiding behind his intransigency. But there was no such a luxury after Talat was uh, elected, after he won, and actually uh, President Mehmed Ali Talat, uh, he won on the same premises as, uh, as Mustafa Akinji. He was offering the uh, Turkish Cypriots the, uh, the, the future in the European Union, and he was uh, very highly and openly pro-solution. But so, and even him with uh, Dimitris Christofias, with the Greek, Greek Cypriot president, then uh, they, uh, they agreed upon the list of convergences and divergences, and uh, this list is still on the table. So whenever there is a uh, leader there who is, uh, who is willing to contribute into the solution, he can pick up on this list of divergences and convergences, and they can start, they can start from there. Okay, but do you think the desire is there? Well, I mean, uh, obviously, on the side of uh, Turkish Cypriot president, the desire is there, but we shouldn't, uh, and I, I'm 100% sure that he will do his best, as we should do in the civil society and academia in Turkey, as Ankara should do, but uh, as far as I can see, uh, observing Cyprus problem for many years, Ankara has been doing that uh, without, uh, without any interruption. Uh, but we shouldn't forget that when uh, Anastasiades, Nikos Anastasiades, was elected as a Greek Cypriot president, the president of the Republic of Cyprus, the hopes were high as well. So uh, the, uh, the media were full of reports, the hopes were actually exceeding, exceeding the limits, but then the negotiations uh, slowed down, they, they paced down, and uh, obviously he had legitimate reasons. There was a crisis, uh, economic crisis, uh, um, but well, there, there are the factors coming into play this time round as well. Let's talk about uh, the discovery of oil in Cypriot waters. How that, how's that going to affect the negotiations? Well, I mean, that's not new. The discovery of, uh, uh, I don't know how much oil, but gas in the Cypriot, uh, in the uh, in this waters around Cyprus. Uh, it's, uh, as I said, like, I mean, it's, uh, it's nothing new. And um, unfortunately, uh, the reserves turn out to be lower than, uh, than, than the expectations were. So for the time being, as far as I can see, it's more about, uh, about politics than, uh, than about the financial or economic profit. Um, years ago, uh, former foreign minister, Greek Cypriot foreign minister, he said once, and he wrote it in, in, in newspapers as well, that discovery of oil and gas around Cyprus could be either a curse or blessing for Cypriots, for both Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots. I think it's it's completely up to them to decide which, which way they will take it. And, and what about uh, Greece's ongoing talks with the EU and the, the economic situation there? How is that going to imp impact uh, what's going on here? Again, the economic crisis in Greece and then subsequently in the Republic of Cyprus is nothing new. So if it didn't play the role by now, I don't think it's going to affect the negotiations any, in any way. But both Greece and Turkey are guarantor powers of Republic of Cyprus. and. Uh, um, to see that their re relation or relation between relationship between uh, Greece and Turkey uh, is improving and it's better than in the past is a positive signal. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, that was uh, Professor Sylvia uh, Triaki uh, there speaking to us.